Hey everybody, I hope you guys are healthy and safe. So about two weeks ago, I tested the Vivo X Fold 2, which was Vivo's new large foldable. I said I was a little bit disappointed with the phone because it was a little bit thick and heavy. Now I am testing Vivo's other foldable that was launched last month, the Vivo X Flip. This is Vivo's first ever flip foldable phone. And good news, I am not disappointed with this one because problems I have the first one, which was a little bit heavy and a little bit thick, does not apply here. This thing is obviously a clamshell foldable, so it is much smaller. It will fit into any pant pocket and even dress shirt pocket. And it weighs only 198 grams, so under 200 grams, which in 2023 standards has to be considered lightweight. And because it folds completely flat, as you can see, its maximum thickness is only about 16 millimeter, which is one millimeter thinner than the Galaxy Z Flip 4. Now, one of the main selling point of the Vivo X Flip is this large outside screen. It measures three inches, about twice as big as the outside screen on the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4. You can do the usual things on it, like take selfies with the front screen using the main camera system and access like widgets like from the calendar. Unfortunately, the biggest complaint I had about most flip phones from Samsung and Oppo, it's also true here, in that this outside screen really only lets me access widgets and a couple of China-specific apps like WeChat. Otherwise, I cannot open like say YouTube or WhatsApp or Google Maps on the outside screen and that's disappointing. I feel like if you make a clamshell foldable phone, with such a large screen, you might as well let us open any app we want on the outside panel. Right now, I believe Motorola is still the only one that's letting us do that. Even when you get notifications, you can only preview the first sentence or so. You cannot actually click into it. You still have to flip open your phone just to read the email, for example. And because the outside screen doesn't let us use all of apps, that means I still have to unfold the phone every single time I really want to get into the phone. Fortunately, the hinge is really well built. As you can see, it can stay in place at any angle. And uh, while it's not as sturdy as the Z Flip 4's hinge, it is still, you know, sturdy enough. You know, if I f shake the phone, it's not going to wobble. The crease is very hard to see. You can see it if you really want to look for it at extreme angles, but for the most part, you can't see the crease. And more importantly, when you run your finger up and down the screen, you can't feel the crease, which you cannot say about the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4. This is a 6.7 inch, 120 hertz OLED panel with resolution a little bit north of 1080p. So it's like FHD plus, not quite WQHD resolution, but the screen looks plenty sharp to my eyes. However, my one complaint is that maximum brightness doesn't get that high. I don't have the official numbers, but um, you know, earlier in the day when it's like 3 p.m. and the sun is very harsh in California, I had trouble seeing the screen. Right now it's much better obviously, but um, definitely if you're used to using a slab flagship phone from the last two years, those screens will be noticeably brighter than this panel. So powering the Vivo X Flip is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which is a last fall's flagship chip. So right now it's not the newest chip around, but still more than powerful enough. When you add it with 12 gigs of RAM, LPDDR5X, you have a phone that's very responsive. And I find that it's, it zips around a little bit faster than say the Google Pixel 7 Pro, for example. So the camera system consists of a 50 megapixel main camera, F1.8 aperture, one over 1.5 inch image sensor. And also get the Zeiss logo on it, but I don't think this camera has the Zeiss T coding. So this seems like just a marketing thing right here. This ultra wide camera is a 12 megapixel ultra wide and actually does a pretty good job. And you have a 32 megapixel front facing camera. But of course, with a phone like this, you're better off taking selfies with the main camera. Now the main camera is quite good for a clamshell foldable phone. This really shouldn't be a surprise because Vivo's smartphone cameras have been arguably the best in class for the past like two years now. Vivo software imaging is quite good in finding proper balance in photos. So even when I'm shooting against harsh backlight or scenes with a lot of different light sources, all the lights are always properly exposed. And I'm a huge fan of Vivo's vintage portrait filter. Now I know this is very gimmicky because it's just a filter, but it looks so good. You know, if you've watched my review of the Vivo X90 Pro Plus or the X80 Pro, you will remember that I shot with that filter a lot. And that's the same story here. So it's Great to see that 
this filter is so awesome purely because of software. You don't really need the IMX 989 one-inch sensor at all. There's a 4,400 mAh battery in here. It's been good enough to last me all day of use easily. The battery can be charged at 44 watt speeds with the included charger. Unfortunately, there is no wireless charging, no IP water resistance rating, and also only a single bottom fine speaker, so no stereo speakers. So Vivo has obviously made some compromises here for the Vivo X Flip to meet a price point. Now this phone doesn't sell outside China unfortunately, but in China you can get this thing for around 800 something US dollars, like that's the converted rate. So that means even if you want to import this phone, you have to pay the usual markup that the resellers charge you. You can still get this thing shipped to you for maybe a little more than a thousand US dollars. And if you do want to import, you can get one from Trinity Electronics in Hong Kong. Now in terms of software, this phone runs Android 13 with Vivo's Origin OS on top. I've actually made a couple of videos on Origin OS already. I'm a fan of it, particularly its interactive widgets. Like for example, this is the calendar widget and I can actually cycle through up to two weeks in advance to see my upcoming scheduled stuff. And likewise with the recorder widget, I can begin recording directly on the home screen and you even get a little wave bar to see the audio that's ticking in and you can even mark checkpoints in the individual clip. I find Origin OS to be good looking and doesn't really get in the way of core Android. So it's one of my favorite Android skins right now. Now, because this is a Chinese ROM, it is quite aggressive at killing background apps. So you do have to jump into settings, go into battery optimization, turn all that off for the apps that you want to get notifications. And also just in case, maybe lock the app in the background too. When you do that, you will then get all your notifications in a timely manner. But yes, it is annoying that you have to jump through these hoops just to make sure that you can get a WhatsApp message on time. So ultimately, the Vivo X Flip is a very polished clamshell foldable phone from Vivo. The hardware is great. The outside cover screen looks good, even if it's a little bit limited in what you can do. And the camera performs better than most of its flip phone peers. But ultimately though, this phone, like it's nice, but it doesn't change the game. I feel like clamshell foldables have kind of plateaued. It's kind of hit the ceiling and all the last several clamshell foldables, whether it's the Oppo Find N2 Flip or the Huawei P50 Pocket or the Vivo X Flip or the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4, they have all performed similarly without one kind of completely beating the others. That's not the case in the large screen foldables where we have the Xiaomi Mix Fold 2, which completely made the Z Fold 4 look bad. You have the Google Pixel Fold, whose camera should be probably the best foldable camera. And then you have something like the Huawei Mate X3, which has a legit periscope zoom lens in a foldable phone. So on the large foldable space, they're introducing innovations, but at this smaller clamshell form factor space, they've all just kind of plateaued a little bit. It comes down to which brand software you like better and the price. But you know what? That's okay, man, because for 800 US dollars, you're getting a really nice looking foldable phone that you can fit into your pocket. And uh, I think that's good enough for a lot of people. So that's about it for this video. I have a lot more content coming up, including hopefully the Google Pixel phone and a couple of other AR glasses too. It's going to be a very exciting last couple of months. So please stay tuned. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.